Yeah, yeah, it's your boy Ashley Knuckles, man. Let me try this one more again. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm coming through late, like black folks paying bills, but it's all good. Uh, this is a video talking about the uh, Jamal Charlo and Danny Jacobs issue. Uh, Jamal was going live on the cameras, you know what I'm saying, talking real greasy, you know, doing what he do as a young fighter, a young man. And uh, when Danny Jacobs was coming around the corner, uh, Jamal homeboy was like, uh, there you go right there. And all of a sudden, Jamal just got quiet and just start, you know, eyeballing, oh boy. You know what I'm saying? Eyeballing Danny Jacobs. So Danny, you know, saw Jamal was like, oh, I pulled up at the right time. You know, and pulled up on him and start charging him up, questioning him about, you know, what's been going on or, back and forth on social media you know the internet videos and interviews and shit and a lot of people start saying you know jamal looked shook because he wasn't as turned up as he was when danny was in front of him but y'all gotta understand these dudes know each other you know what i'm saying way back in the gap you know back when jamal and his brother was all training at savannah's with laura and all them omar henry was still alive you know, DJ Danny Jacobs, you know, used to come down here. Andre Rose here, they used to come down here. You know, they used to come down to the South. So these guys, they know each other. They friends, you know. Danny Jacobs, when he was coming up through the ranks, used to fight on Juan Diaz undercard. So, Eric, I mean, them them cats in New York that fight, they know Houston guys. You know, it's a, you know, everybody in the fight game, you know, if you somebody, you know each other. It's just the way it is, you know. You know, Danny used to spar with Marcus. It's just that, you know, Marcus don't fight no more for whatever reason. He just gave up on it. You know, all these guys, they know each other. So, you know, these guys got in front of each other. And, you know, what did Danny, as soon as Danny watched, uh, walked up on him, somebody from mall camp was like, you know, hold up, homeboy, what it is. DJ Danny said, this is my man right here. That's the first thing he said. No, this is my man. Just to let everybody know it ain't going to be no friction right here and there. But, you know, they fight us. And it was the same thing on Maul. On Maul end, he got, he wasn't turned up because Maul was supposed to slap the nigga right there. He wasn't finna hit. Dan, he know that they friends. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? This, they fight us too, you know. And, and all of, all, everybody in the fight game who friends know, hey, this is what we do for a living. And it just so happens. Guess what? We not at no cash register. You know what I'm saying? We're not sacking groceries. We're not at no desk job. We're not teaching in a classroom. We're not, you know, doing what normal folk do for us. We're not throwing garbage cans in the back of a truck. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing garbage men shit. We're not delivering mail. We fight for a living. So it's got to be an understanding that even though I rock with you, uh, we got to understand that, you know, at some point I may have to see you. You know, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is this. Everybody saying Jamal was shook because he wasn't as turned up. And I'm going to tell you, that's bullshit. I know I know them twins. And most importantly, I spent more time with Jamal than I did with Jamel. Because a lot of times I used to come to the gym. Mel went there. Mel is a fighter, but Mel is a businessman too. Mel is always trying to build their brand. You know, he's more on the... He got. I think he got a lot more business acumen or savvy than Maul. Maul is 100% fighter. But but Mel is the type of guy that probably could put on a suit and be ringside. Maul, I don't see it like that. Because when it's time to fight, Maul is not a guy who talk. He talk when he not fighting. When he stop talking, it's a good chance somebody finna get busted in their goddamn mouth. Point blank period. That's just the way he is. If he ain't talking, you better be prepared to use them reflexes. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he just out he wouldn't turned up, he was scoping. He's seeing uh Danny Jacobs mannerisms, seeing his body language, you know, because the dude walked up on him. So I mean a normal in a normal situation, a, a normal cat from the street walk up on him, he probably gonna get his teeth knocked the fuck out. But he know Danny. But Danny, at the same time, is a fighter. So he like scoping and listening and at the same time conversing with the cat, letting them know, hey, you know what I'm saying? Let's quit with the shit is what he said. Let's quit with the shit. Meaning, let's stop with the interviews. Let's stop fat mouthing. Let's go and get it going on. 
Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really about to badmouth you in front of me. I'm not about to badmouth you. You know, I know you. We know each other. We friends and shit. But you know, I'm in 60 now. I'm in middle way. Let's do this damn thing. Let's fight. You know what I'm talking? Look, let me tell you something. When I first started fucking with the twins, Maul didn't even have six fights to his resume. And he, he already wanted to fight Canelo. You know what I'm talking about? You guys got to... Y'all got to disconnect from this social media shit. You know what I'm talking about? Because, if, you know, when you go to the gyms, man, you got to understand, it's a lot of guys in the gym. And even the sorriest motherfucker in the gym think he got some hands. He think he can do something with them fucking hands he got. You know, it's a whole different atmosphere. Ain't no fucking keyboards and monitors up in there. It's dudes in there training, dudes in there sparring, getting hit in their head, and they not getting no check for that. You know what I'm talking about? They're not even, even getting a check for the little sparring that they're doing unless somebody... A fighter who somebody bring him into their camp, then you're going to pay him for sparring and shit like that. But on a normal instance, when they just training, sparring, you ain't giving a dude no check because you sparring with him. Sparring, sometimes it's free. Sometimes sparring, you get, a, you get paid for it. If it's for, you know, a dude who got a fight coming up, you know, sparring is sparring. It's sparring all the goddamn time. So what the fuck does it matter if it's a certain guy who throwing a punch and hitting him with a punch as opposed to somebody else? All punches fucking hurt. They all fucking hurt. You know? Man, one thing, man, I'm telling you, a man is a man in this game, bro. I'm telling you, it ain't no fucking fear, bro. It ain't no goddamn fear. The fighters are not, they're not afraid of each other. Whenever a fighter don't fight another fighter, it's not because, oh, I'm getting in the ring with another man. It's not that. It may be... Uh, he don't want to lose his marketability because he undefeated and a loss can be detrimental in this game. He won't get the purses that he was getting before. It ain't fear, bro. If you are afraid of another fighter, I guarantee you're not going to fight for a living. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? It's not fear of another man being in the ring across the ring from you because any man you line up across the ring from you can clean your clock. All it takes is you being just a, a millisecond too slow, bringing your guard up, and you could be looking at the lights. You know, fuck the business side and fuck what fans say. Fans say a lot of shit, but fans don't know everything. Fans be on some bullshit, you know? But anyway, man, I know the twins. I know Maul. Maul and Mel, they look alike. That's it. They not the same people. They not the same dude. You know, they don't have the same personality. You know, they just look alike. When Maul stop talking, you may get hit in your fucking mouth. If he talking and smiling, then everything is still cool. You know, he just bullshitting. He just fucking around. But when he get quiet, it's when it's time. It's time. It's time to do work. You know, like I'll give you an example. Like when he was when he was about to fight Julian Williams. When he was fight, about to fight Julian Williams, Team Williams was doing all that fat mouthing. It was only them. Because they already they already pushed Maul to the limit. So Maul ain't say a word. Because he was in turn up mode. Lion mode as they would say. When Maul not talking. You best believe he prepared to beat somebody motherfucking ass. Straight like that. It ain't no shook. I mean these guys in spar. They done been in the same gym. Laura. I got the pictures. I was in that bitch taking the pictures. You know I was in there fo uh, videotaping the footage and shit. Until Ronnie Shields wouldn't allow me to do the footage. I got the whole reason why I got the uh, Jamal, Charlo, and Arislan Laura sparring footage out there is because uh, uh, Laura's manager told me to tape the sparring and send it to him for the guy they were preparing for at the time. Maybe it was Paul Williams, I think, at that time. And maybe it's somebody else. I can't remember. So they wanted me to tape the sparring, which Ronnie normally doesn't allow that at all in the gym no only pictures no but uh uh lewis the cubas jr told me to tape it and send it to him well it just so happens i i had to you know i had to fly out of out of the state and i didn't get a chance to sorry Lou, i never got a chance to say i'm sorry to you for that you know we kicked it for that week and that was way back in the gap laura ain't had no sports cars that he got now he had a big houses that he got now he ain't had none of that shit Laura was poor as fuck. He was living off of, he was living off of, well, I don't want to put his lo the location where he was, but it wasn't too far away from Savannah's. It was in efficiency. It had a bed, it had a couch, and it had like a 13 inch 
black and white TV. That's what he was living in when he was coming up through the ranks. He had no money. They, you know, they was taking fights as they can get him. They were, you know, struggling fighters. The only thing that he had to his name was his Olympic pedigree and amateur, amateur history. That's it. You know, Louis the Cubas Jr., he wasn't on this big cake that he on right now. His daddy was somebody. He wasn't nobody yet. You know, he was coming up. He had his daddy's name to rely on. That's why he's somebody right now. But back in the game, way back when I was a part of the shit, he was nobody. You know what I'm saying? So um, he asked me to tape the footage, give it to him, and I didn't get a chance to do that. They were going to dissect the sparring and, you know, try to find whatever weaknesses they saw in, in, in Laura's game. It, uh, as a poll, you know, in, in in terms of the sparring, because he was sparring Jamal, he was sparring, uh, he was sparring, uh, what's the cat name with the gold teeth? Hold on. He was sparring, goddamn, oh, um, uh, fuck, what's his name? Oh, goddamn, King Solomon, what's his name? Welterweight from, from Baton Rouge. Um, goddamn, I can't think of his first name. King Solomon. Um, whatever. Um, he fought, uh, I believe he fought Demetrius Hopkins and beat the beat, beat, you know, beat Demetrius Hopkins down. Well, actually outboxed him in a, in a route. Um, I can't Brad, Brad King Solomon. He was sparring Brad King Solomon that day. He was sparring law, uh, law. He was sparring Jamal. Shane was in the gym. Uh, Jay Prince, you know, who's royalty down here. He was in the gym. A lot of folks was in the gym that that particular day, you know. But anyway, um, I don't even know how I got on that shit. You know, I'm fucking tipsy and shit. Yo, ain't nobody's fearing goddamn Danny Jacobs, bro. Nobody's fearing him. Jamal is not afraid of Danny Jacobs. He want to fight Danny Jacobs. He want to fight Triple G. He was not shook when that man was in front of him. Just like Danny wasn't shook. These guys are fighters. They know each other. They've been in the ring with each other. You know, you know, Danny's not a stranger down here in the H. Andre Rozier is not a stranger down here in the H. I was in the gym when Omar Henry and Danny Jacobs were sparring. I got the foot I got the footage on that shit. I got the pictures on that shit. You know, it was some good sparring. They sparred for like for from when I was there. They sparred for like three days. I was there for two. You know? I got the interviews from that shit. I don't know if you check my video log. It's from years ago. I don't do that shit too much no more. You know, look, that Maul, look, Maul was talking about making a fight. Danny Jacobs started bringing up numbers. He's like, how am I ducking you when I'm touching M's? Once he started bringing up money, it was Big Bang take Lil Bang. He was, I guess, letting Jamal know, you know, how I'm ducking you when you're not even on this level. Not saying you can't compete with the guys I compete with, but you're not getting the bread I'm getting. So that lets you know you're not on this level. Keep winning and then you'll get on this level. You know, it wasn't that, you know, the dude is afraid and shit like that. That's not, nah. Fuck that shit. That ain't the way it went down. Internet niggas is something else, dog, when they come to this box and shit. Oh, he was afraid, dog. Fighters are not afraid of each other. I don't know how long we got to go through this shit, dog. They're not afraid of each other, man. Fighters are not scared, bro. I mean, they, they, they stand across the ring with hundreds of motherfuckers, whether it's on fight night or any regular day in the gym or when they're actually at camp. You know what I'm talking about? They're not afraid when they don't fight somebody it's for one reason or another. But it's not because, oh, I'm afraid to get in the ring with this guy. Oh, he's going to hit me in my head with a big punch. You know how fucking stupid that shit sound? You can get knocked out in the gym with no fucking purse. You know what I'm talking about? It's not fear. It's not fear, bro. So I'm just saying, to make a long story, not to belittle the fucking point, Jamal Charlo was not afraid and is not afraid of no Danny Jacobs and vice versa. Danny Jacobs is not afraid of Jamal or any other fighter on the earth. They got to see each other. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they got to see each other. You know what I'm talking about? They feeling some type of way. Boxing is the only, one of the only sports in the world where if you feel some type of way about a guy, y'all can get in the ring, handle it, and actually get paid for the shit and not have to worry about going to jail. It's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. 
they're going to get it in. They're going to get it done. And, you know, we're going to see who the best between those guys on that night is. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of guys that think it's DJ, which I, I'm not against y'all guys if y'all rock with DJ. You know what I'm saying? And you got a lot of guys that think it's Young Ma. And I happen to be one of them. I know when Young Ma start putting them paws on them, it's going to be a whole different game. It don't matter you pulled them. Now you got to deal with them hands. You know? I done seen Ma smash many a cat from when he was a welterweight, now all the way up until 160. Now I don't get to deal with the twins. You know, back in the game, it was two broke-ass fighters getting interviewed by a broke-ass cameraman. These boys are seeing some money. I'm seeing six figures a year. I'm not tripping. I don't be in the gym because the gym and the sport of boxing don't give me money like I'm seeing. So I don't go to the gym. Fuck the gym. You know, if I go to the gym, it's only because I want to be there. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And these guys are getting money because these guys are just major in the game. So, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, as time changes, you know, a lot of circumstances change, too. You know, hopefully I can get back doing what I used to do. But, I, I mean, if I don't, I'm not losing. Look, I'm not losing no sleep on that bullshit. I'm living, bro. I'm doing good. I'm living good. Everybody, my kids good. Fuck it. Same thing with the twins. I, you know, they do. Well, I don't, I don't know. Mel, Mel live in L.A., he be in L.A. most of the time, but Maul don't stay. Maul and Laura don't stay too far away from me. We, I ain't finna give up my location, but it was my kids used to go to the same school that Laura kids went to. Now they don't go to the same school no more. They not in the same district no more. But it ain't. It wasn't nothing for me to roll up to like you know fucking Petco. It'll get some fish food from my aquariums, from my aquariums that I got in my house, and I see Laura up in there. You know, or pull up at Kroger and they go mall. Pull up at Wingstop, they go mall right there, diamond up. It ain't, I mean, ain't nothing, you know. Shit, Keenan McCardell stay around where I stay. I see Keenan McCardell at Walmart. The, 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 the Jag wide receiver from back in the game, back when it was, uh, Smith. Uh, fuck, what was his name? The fast, he was the, one of the fastest dudes in the league. He was, um, Wide receiver with Keenan McCarter that played for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Keenan McCarter stayed right around the way. He be up in the Walmart, diamond up in the earrings and shit like that. You know, so, yo, man, the South something else. You know what I'm talking about? The South something else. Everybody, a lot of folk know each other. If you somebody, you know everybody, you know? So... I mean, everybody, there ain't nobody starstruck down here. You know, it ain't nothing to see face. But face be in Atlanta a lot more of the time. But it ain't nothing to see face. It ain't nothing to see Kiki or uh, Devin or, you know, T-Mac. You know, it ain't nothing to see these guys. You know, it ain't nothing to, back in the game. It wasn't nothing to see uh, Jeff Bagwell somewhere. You know, Biggio. You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't nothing. Elijah Wan, you know? Or Hafiz, his brother. Hafiz, I used to go to Second Baptist and take my boy Nick up there. I thought my boy Nick would be a point guard in the league, but he, he got an attitude. So, you know, and, and nothing never manifests from that. So he in, my, he in my industry now. He in oil and gas now, but... Nick was one of the coldest guys that I knew in basketball coming up. I used to take him to West Side Tennis Club where the Rockets used to uh, do practice. One day I took him up there. Rashard is up there. Him and Nick used to play on the same middle school team. Rashard Lewis, he came up under me, you know. But, you know, a lot of these guys, when they get major, you know, they don't know nobody no more. But I know all these guys, they know me. You know what I'm saying? They all know me. But here's the thing. Nick, I, he went one-on-one -on -one with Moochie Norris and took that boy to school. The only one that could, could compete with Nick at Westside, which was ran by Mario Ellie. Mario Ellie was running it uh, at that time. You know what I'm saying? Even You know, but way back in the gap. Uh, uh, um, who was the guy that used to play with fucking LeBron? Hold on. He was he used to shoot threes. Uh, fuck it. D. Jones. D. Jones used to be here. Uh, uh, Ansu Cisse used to be over there. Rashar used to be here. Catino, Catino was the only one that could beat Nick because Catino, after getting schooled and took to the took to the cup over and over, Catino would just shoot his shoot his eyes out, and that that's the only way he would win. Shooting threes on his ass, you know, you couldn't nobody see Catino with the left hand and the three point shot. I mean, it is what it is. He couldn't he couldn't do nothing with Catino with them threes. Um. But yeah, anyway, long story short, man, Ma ain't afraid of no uh, Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs is not afraid of 
Jamal, you know, back in the game, that's back when Regis used to be an amateur. I used to be in the gym with Regis. Regis used to be sparring uh, Highland Williams, who we all, everybody, if you any from anywhere down here, everybody thought Highland Williams would be world champion. Everybody thought Marcus would be world champion. It didn't happen. He used to spar uh, Juan. Um, uh, um, uh, um, Regis used to spar L. Dot. You know, Omar, you know, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? This was a hotbed at one at one time when they were all a tight niche group at Savannah's. It ain't like that no more, you know? So, but anyway, man, um, you know, I look forward to seeing that fight. You know, Jamal got the fight coming up with um, Hugo Boss, and uh, we'll see what go on with him and Hugo Boss. You know, that's not an easy fight. Maul may think it's an easy fight. It's not an easy fight. Maybe when Maul start putting them paws on him, it's going to become easy because, you know, Maul got stones in his hands and shit like that. But Hugo Boss, he got he got some talent. So I expect a much better fight than probably most people expect. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll see Danny Jacobs and, and Jamal Charlo. But I think, um, I think Eddie Hearn is going to take danny jacobs on the european tour but that's just my own thoughts on it and um we'll just see what happens in the future we'll just see what happens so um anyway let me cut this short man it's your boy ash man i'm out later